In this video tutorial, we're going to be going over how to use interrupts to make system calls inside of our Linux box. Alright, so let's get to it. Firstly, let's write the general layout of a netwide assembler source file. What is a system interrupt? A system interrupt is nothing more than a system call and that basically translates to making requests from the operating system and asking it basically to do something for you. In our case, we're going to be asking the operating system to write a message to this console to the screen. So there are several different types of system calls and each of these system calls have a unique um, identifier. Um, as you can see I did a quick Google search for Linux system calls and this was the first resu result that I got and it displays a pretty good amount of information on Linux system calls. Um, remember one thing to note that is with system calls you have to have values stored in registers like the accumulation register, the buffer register, the counter register, the data register, and so on and so forth. So, um, so to make a system call for writes, we have to put the value four inside of the AX register, and then over in the BX register, we have to put in the value of uh, the value one, which is going to represent the file that we want to write to. In our case we're going to be writing to file number one which is the Linux standard output while, stand, while the file number zero is Linux standard input the keyboard and standard output number three number two is the standard error output. So in this case we're going to pass one to the BX register continuing on this counter register is going to have the address of the message that we want to display and the data register is going to dis contain the number of bytes that we want to write to the screen so quick review basically what you're doing when you're making system calls is by basically taking numbers into the regist appropriate registers to satisfy the requirement for that particular system call that you want to actually implement. So this terminates the, this terminates the string and makes it so that we have a return line. Um, and remember for the system call we need the total number of bytes that we want to write to the screen. And so to do that we're just going to count the number of um, characters inside of this, uh, inside of this string. So I counted 26, so that's what I'm going to put there. Now let's actually write the system call. And we do that by saying we have to move the system call that we want, which is going to be 4. Because if you remember, we want 4 to be our system call. And this is going to be, you know, the file the message address and the number of bytes to write. So that's what's going on. One is standard output while zero is standard input and two is standard error. Now ECX is going to hold the message address 
and you do message addresses by just simply having the name of the variable that is an alias for the for the address of the particular variable uh, next we want to actually uh, put in the number of bytes to write and we do that by making use of the message length And now, this is the interrupt. This hands over control to the operating system and tells it tells it to use all these informations to make a system call. And so that's it. Let's go to our console and uh, compile this program. It says we have an error, so let's go ahead and correct that. Problem fixed. Let's come back. So this is our program. Let's go ahead and run our program, and it should print out the message that we want. And so there we go. Assembly is freaking cool. Now, if you wanted, I can write an additional function to make use of this program, make use of these instructions so I don't have to write this every single time. But to do that, it's pretty simple. We have to create a new stack frame for a new function. and we're going to call it write but instead of making references to this variable we're going to say EVP minus 8 sorry plus 8 and then here we're going to say EVP plus 12. This watch my other tutorials when I talk about the stack and this will make perfect sense to you. Alright so that's it. And so now let's go ahead and change this. We're gonna say push message length push message and then call write if we come back and recompile the program after fixing our problem And it's still assembly is freaking cool. All right, so join me in the next tutorial. And uh, as always, please rate and subscribe and drop a comment below. Thank you.